Hey, good morning everybody. This is Mr. Shua coming at you with another math video. This time we're going to talk about weighted averages. I know some students in algebra are uneasy about this subject and not sure exactly how to answer these questions. So I have a few weighted averages questions here. I'm going to go through them step by step. Hopefully after looking at this video, you'll feel a little bit easier on how to answer these weighted averages questions. So Enough of me talking, let me just get right to it. All right, let's look at our first question. Margo has 40 milliliters of a 25% solution. How many milliliters of a 60% solution should she add to obtain the required 30% solution? Now, um, the way that I'm gonna go about it and the way that I would suggest that you do it is make yourself a little chart and if you're writing this with pen and pencil, you can just use pen and pencil, but since I'm uh, on Word, I'm just going to use their table feature, and I'm going to take information from the question in order to help me solve this. So, from the question, I know that I have a 25% solution. I know that I have a 60% solution, and they want me to make a mixture, which is a 30% solution. Uh, what else do I know? I know that I have 40 milliliters of the 25% solution, and they want me to know how many milliliters of the 60% solution, and then my mixture is a combination of the 40 milliliters plus however many milliliters of the 60%. So, if I have my 25% solution, I have 40 milliliters of it, I have my 60% solution, but I don't know how many milliliters of it I'm going to need, and my mixture is going to be a 30% solution, which is a combination of the two. Okay, so that's going to help me to set up my math equation here. Alright, so do this. Okay, so my 25% solution, 40 milliliters, added to my 60% solution, however many milliliters that is, is going to give me my 30% solution, which is a combination of the two. Right? All right, so let me pull up my calculator here. And, help me. all right, so let's see. So, 0.25 five times 40 that's going to be 10 okay so 10 plus 0.60x equals now I'm going to take this point 30 and distribute it to the parentheses so that's going to be 0.30 times 40 gives me 12 so that's going to be 12 plus 0.30x. Oh, and I made a mistake right here. That should be a plus. All right. So I have 10 plus 0.60x equals 12 plus 0.30x. So now, if I subtract 10, both sides of the equation, and also subtract 0.30, on both sides of the equation. There's 10, well, subtract 10. All right, so I'm going to subtract 10 on both sides and subtract 0.30 on both sides. And if I do that, my 10s are going to cancel out here, and I'm going to have 0.30x on this side of the equation. Here, 12 minus 10 is going to give me 2, and then the 30s will cancel out here. So now I have 0.30x equals 2, and then all I need to do is just divide both sides by 0.30. So then, I've got my calculator here, 2 divided by 0.30 equals 6 and 2 thirds. So 6 point six seven repeating 
So that basically means that I need six and two thirds milliliters of my 60% solution added to the 40 milliliters of the 25% solution in order to create my 30% solution. Okay, so that's the way we solve that one. Let's go on to question two. Let's see what it's saying. And let me push this down a little bit here. All right, so two trains are 1,500 miles apart heading toward each other on parallel tracks. Train A is traveling east at 55 miles per hour, while train B is traveling west at 65 miles per hour. When will the trains pass each other? So this is one of those distance questions. And if you remember from class, uh, you received a formula D equals RT, which is distance equals rate times time. So I'm going to make myself another little table here. So this is my D, so distance is rate. And time. I guess I could, you know, put them in the center, but I guess that's just semantics. Really doesn't matter much. All right. So, anyway, so let's see what we have here. We have a train, the rate's 55 miles an hour, traveling east, 55 miles per hour. And we have one going west at 65 miles per hour. And then the time. Well, we don't know what the time is yet because want, they want to know when <clears throat> will they pass each other. So we'll just use the variable t for that. So the distance is going to be the rate times the time. So that's basically 55t. And then the rate here is 65t. The distance equals the rate times the time. All right. And then we know that they're 1,500 miles apart. So basically... I'm go here. I'm just gonna put this in the middle. Uh, the train traveling east is 55 miles per hour. The train traveling west is going 65 miles per hour, and total is 1500 because they're at 1500 miles apart. So when we solve for t, that's gonna be the time, or you know how long it takes for them to pass each other, right? So, 55t plus 65t until, let's see, 55 plus 65, I think is 120. Yep, and it is. So then it's basically 120t equals 1500. Then all I need to do is divide 1500 by 120. So 1500 divided by, since 120 is already up there, I'm just going to hit second answer, and I get 12.5. So T equals 12.5, which basically means the time is going to take 12 and a half hours before they actually pass each other. And then we can double check that and see, but yeah, that's right. So at uh, 12 and a half hours, they will pass each other. Okay, hopefully that makes sense there. All right, so let's take a look at our third question. Oh, I put it all the way down here. All right, let's see here. So, <clears throat> a candy store wants to create a mix using two different candies. The lemon drop candies sell for $5.45 a pound, while the lime drop candies sell for $7.35 a pound. How many pounds of the $7.35 a pound lime drop candies must be mixed with 11 pounds of the $5.45 a pound lemon drop candies to sell the mixture for $6.25 a pound? Now, some of you are probably reading this question and going WTF, but it doesn't have to be WTF. Let me show you how you can solve this one here. All right. So... Again, what I'm going to do with this one here, I'm going to make myself a table to help me to solve this one here. And with a question like this, I'm actually going to make a expanded table. The previous one I had uh, three by three. This one I'm going to make uh, four columns and three rows. And I'll show you why. Well, let's see what information I have. I have lemon drop candies. 
I have lime drop candies, and then the mixture that they want me to make, right? Okay, so I know that my lemon drop candies are $5.45 a pound. I know that my lime drop candies are $7.35 a pound. And then the mixture, once we make it, is going to sell for $6.25 a pound. Right? With me so far? Okay, cool. What else do I know? They want me to take 11 pounds of the lemon drop candies. And they want to know how many or how many pounds of the lime drop do I need to add to make my mixture. And then my mixture is going to be a combination of the 11 pounds of the lemon drop candies plus however many pounds of the lime drop I have to mix with it. Right? So this last column, that's going to be what? My lemon drop, 11 pounds. My... Lime drop, however many pounds that is, and then my mixture, which sells for six twenty-five, and then eleven plus x, right? So that's going to help me to set up my math equation. All right, I'm go here, put this in the center. So basically, eleven pounds of the lemon drop at five forty-five. Add it to however many pounds of the lime drop, which sell for seven thirty-five, is going to equal my mixture at six twenty-five, which is a combination of the eleven pounds of the lemon drop plus however many pounds of the lime drop I have. Right? Okay. So let me just pull up my calculator again. I want to do five forty-five times 11, which is uh, 59.95. Okay, so 59.95 plus 7.35x equals, now I'm going to take this 625 and distribute it to the parentheses. So 625 times 11 68.75, so 68.75 plus 6.25x. And, okay, center. All right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract 59.95 on both sides, and I'm going to subtract 625 on both sides, so minus 59.95 on both sides, and minus 6.25x on both sides, minus 59.95 on both sides, minus 6.25x, right? Because these two will cancel each other out, these two will cancel each other out. All right, so now 735 Minus 625, isn't that a dollar 10? 1, 10x equals, and I'm just going to use the calculator to figure out what, 6875 minus 5995 equals 8.8, 8.8. Oh, well, that's easy. So if I divide 8.8 by 1.1, I should get 8. Right? So 8.8 .8 divided by 1.1, 1 1.10, 1 same thing. So x equals 8. So in this case, x equals 8. So that means that I need to combine 8 pounds of the lime drop candies with 11 pounds of the lemon drop candies in order to make a lemon lime drop mixture, which can sell for $6.25 a pound. Again, the key with these weighted averages questions is taking the information from the question and breaking it, make yourself a chart, break it down to see what they're asking for, then set them equal to each other and solve. So. 
Hopefully this makes weighted averages questions a little bit easier for you to answer and I'll see you guys on the next video.